Welcome to African Voices. I'm Ari Tokwo. Driven by unbending passion and the power of her voice, she is risen to the top cadre of journalism in the continent. Sowing seeds of inspiration in many through telling stories of Africa's changemakers and dazzling trendsetters. Greetings from Lagos. From Lagos to Nairobi. I'm Ari Topo, coming to you from the Erika A Style Studios in Nairobi, Kenya. Host of CNN African Voices. This is African Voices. Ari Topo talks to youth best. Since time immemorial, stories have sowed seeds of inspiration to generations. That is why today's interview is quite special, as my guest is a switched on storyteller from Nigeria. If you are an ardent follower of Senior African Voices, you probably know her. Thank you so much, Arita Paul, for making time for this interview here on Youth Best. Thank you for having me. Wow, I mean, <laughs> you are quite a handful. I know you've done a couple of things here and there and all that. But I mean, for just someone who may be watching you and just asking themselves, I mean, who Arita Paul is? Arit, I am a TV host. I am a filmmaker. I host... CNN African Voices, which is uh, a show that talks about innovative, inspirational Africans on the continent and in the diaspora. I host a show called Untold Facts, which tells the experiences and perspectives of LGBT people in Nigeria. I moderate events. I am a voiceover talent. I am an occasional writer, and I am an always constant lover of food. <laughs> Interesting. I think from your Instagram, somebody can just be like, boom, and the food, there you go. <laughs> Very true. Uh, interestingly, yeah. So, I mean, you know, you mentioned the part of, you know, you're the host of, uh, you know, African Voices, you know, change makers. And, and really, <laughs> let me tell you, let me shock you, by the way, that, um, you know, growing up, I always wanted to, you know, get to work at CNN someday. And actually, CNN Africa, by the way. <laughs> So it's, it's interesting. I'm, 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 I'm actually today. I'm actually today interviewing somebody. I, I want that job. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you for letting me. Know. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I mean, I want to check it from the angle of you know, like storytelling. Is this something that you know you're growing up as a as a young girl? Did you always have an eye for storytelling? I actually always love to tell stories. Um, I remember in primary school, whenever we had to write those essays about the day everything went wrong with me or what I did during my holidays, those were my favorites because I got the chance to really express and probably embellish quite a bit, uh, you know, my experiences. And the older I have grown, the more aware I have become about the power of storytelling and the importance of telling our stories and the diversity of our stories. So yes, as a child, I, I loved storytelling. Um, I didn't think of it as a career then, just as something that I enjoyed. And I'm very excited and very grateful to have a career where I get to do that. Wow, and it, interesting. And of course, journalism, I mean, found you and <laughs> you're right, and you're doing actually terrific work, by the way. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, so I, yeah, you mentioned, I mean, quite a number of things, you know, writer, producer, and you, you're a host as well, you know, you moderate events and all that. Now in the work of, <laughs> in the work of COVID, this is how we do things now, you know, just virtual. Exactly. Yeah, so as you, as you scale up your ladder day by day, I read, I mean, what are, you know, how has it been for you? What have, what have, what have you learned so far so good? I mean, what, have the, what are the insights you've picked along the way? I think that... My biggest ongoing lesson has been a combination of learning to define success for myself, learning to give myself the parameters for success, and at the same time being content with my journey and being present in each moment. Because I think that sometimes we're so focused on getting to the next step, getting to the next destination, that we don't always remember to take a minute to appreciate where we are right now. I also think that it's important for us to know for ourselves what success means to us so that you're not running somebody else's journey. You have to make sure that the things you are aiming for are the things that are relevant to you. So those are my two biggest and ongoing lessons. 
Wow, interesting. I mean, and uh, I know there are quite a number of, you know, you know, fulfilling uh, moments that you've done so far so good as well. So there was, a, there, was a, there was a nomination you were in, I think in March about under women in Africa. How, how is that? You know, there was a period in my career where I set a list of nominations that I wanted to get. Mm -hmm. I didn't get it. Ah. <laughs> <laughs> what that forced me to do was to examine what validation looked like for me. And I've been able to work to a place where my validation in my career comes from personally knowing that I'm doing a good job. So when I get nominations like that these days, I approach them from a very grateful perspective and an appreciation that people are seeing the work that I do and they are acknowledging them. So every nomination is always something special. All right, interesting that, interesting insight there. So, I mean, as you do all these, you know, traveling from this country to that country, you know, documenting stories of, you know, dazzling trendsetters across the African continent, I mean, how do you all the time ensure that, you know, you remain grounded and level-headed as well? I think it goes back again to defining this journey for myself. It's very easy to get caught up in the buzz of it, in the, the hype, in the, flash, the hype, that's the word, in the hype of it. But at the root of it, are you able to acknowledge to yourself that you are doing what you want to do in the way that you want to do it? I think it's impossible to, let me put it this way. I think that recognizing for me that beyond the height, this is a lot of work. And this is also a, a job that is very significant for many people, helps me to remember and to keep grounded and not to focus so much on the flash, the hype, but on the work that I'm doing and the people's stories that I get to tell. Oh, interesting, interesting right there. I mean, so uh, I, I, I know this has really, you know, come up in, in quite a number of, uh, you know, it comes up when you talk about, you know, Africa and, and storytelling as well, and, you know, and, and the perception out here. And uh, you, you yourself being, in a, you know, like a global media organization, I mean, how do you, you know, always, you know, push for, you know, that impartiality, you know, you know in, in traveling the breadth of Africa and telling a story, you know, they always say that our stories are best, are best told by us. I guess... Our stories are best told by us, and I'm, I'm grateful that I'm the one who gets to tell these stories. I also work with an incredible team. I work with a producer who has spent a lot of time on the continent and who is very open to understanding the continent. I also, um, I'm learning how to tell African stories to an audience that doesn't always know the context of our stories. So if we're speaking among ourselves, we understand the nuances, we understand our context. There are many things that we often don't need to say because we understand. Um, when you're telling stories for a global organization, you have to be conscious that there are people who are listening to your stories who don't have those contexts and who don't have those backgrounds. So it's challenging me to go a little bit deeper into the stories that we're telling and why we're telling them and how we're telling them. Um, but on the whole, I'm very grateful to be working with a team that recognizes the value of our stories, recognizes the layers and the nuances of our stories and who are excited about telling it. Wow. Well, that, that, I think that is spot on. That is spot on, I read. So, I mean, your profession allows you to travel, right? And, you know, and get new experiences and meet different people, you know, with, with divergent views and all that, right? And, uh, you know, as, 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 in, as in line of, with your work and everything you do, I mean, I know you've been able to document some of, you know, the most amazing stories of people who are speaking nothing but the language of enthusiasm. I mean, what have these, you know, stories opened your eyes to? I mean, do you have a favorite so far? Oh gosh, every time I say I have a favorite and then I, I get another story and I'm like, no, 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 I actually like that one more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that there is such a diversity of stories that they impact on me in different ways. And 
I'm not going to name a favorite because it will change by next week. But I think that for every story I get to tell, I think about how many more stories there are yet to tell and how many perspectives I'm yet to explore. For instance, we did a story about a Samburu warrior who has now become um, an environmentalist and who protects lions. Wow. And on the from the outside, you might think, oh yeah, that's, that, that's a nice story. Until you start to understand the intricate relationship that Samburu warriors have always had with lions. And why this is such a big deal that a warrior is saying, I'm not going to hunt lions, I'm going to protect them. And I'm going to work with my community and the wider world to make sure that we continue to protect lions in Kenya because we can have another relationship with them. So that's something I would never have learned if we didn't tell that story. So for me, every story shows me, you know, gives me a little bit more insights, gives me a little bit more perspective and excites me to see what else is there to explore and to learn. Wow, wow, that, that, is, that, is, quite, that is quite interesting and spot on really. I mean, the, the Samburu the story, I mean, it is quite something. So, I mean, as you, as you look at and, and reflect at, at all this, what, what, what is the hope, you know, you know, any other person would pick from, from, from that and even your, your personal story as a storyteller, what do you hope, you know, any, anyone would watch this would pick from that? I hope people will recognize that their journeys are valid, that each story is valid. And that the fact that your story doesn't look like another person's doesn't mean that it is not an important or a necessary story. I also hope that we place that side by side with the fact that there is a multiplicity of stories out there. And so we cannot allow our individual stories to become a universal truth because that is rarely the case. So as we value our stories, I hope we also make space for other stories and not in comparison to ours, but as individual and valuable um, stories in their own respect. Interesting, yeah. And um, you know, for, for every other for, for every other you know journalist, you know, who is part and parcel, you know, you know, shaping conversations in governance, in politics, in art, in culture, in technology, and all that put together, SDGs as well, and they're quite dear to Africa. I mean. How, how can we, you know, continue progressively using journalism, you know, to shape and push, you know, uh, you know, set the agenda as well for these discussions and, and as well create avenues, uh, you know, for people to engage and all that and share opinions and all that. I mean, for just Afri other, you know, Af other African journalists. I think that we need to be aware of the power that the media has. I think that as journalists and as storytellers, because this also goes out to influencers, to content creators, uh, all the diversities of ways that stories are being told. I think that we must be aware of the power that we have when we tell stories and that many times we are presenting a perspective and we must be conscious of that. I think we must be conscious of bias and that we must hold ourselves in a space where we can interrogate our biases. I hope that when we have a space to speak, that when we have ensured that we are telling the best story we can, that we speak with truth and we speak with honesty and we speak with as clear a voice as we can. I hope we remember that we are telling our stories. And so we must be careful to acknowledge, we must be careful to ensure that the stories we are telling are the stories that are supposed to be told, if you know what I mean. I think that many times we can get caught up in the wave of a story that Sometimes we forget to pause and ask ourselves, what this, whose story am I telling here? And I also hope that we remember that the fact that we are holding the mic is not for us to only always be the ones to speak, but that sometimes you are holding the mic so that you can give somebody else an opportunity to let their voice be heard in spaces where they might not have as much access as we do. Wow, insight. That, that's actually quite a re rich insight to other, to other journalists who are in this space. I mean, yourself, I know you, you, you blaze trails in your own way, but I mean, are there some of the walks and other people you look and say, oh my goodness, I just love how they do their thing? I'm, I'm always intrigued 
and challenged and motivated by the variety of journalists and storytellers that are out there. And I'm going to crave your indulgence and not give any names. <laughs> but I, I am challenged by anyone who I can see building their craft. I'm challenged by the people who are exploring new ways of telling stories. Um, for everybody who decides to start a, a vlog or who decides to become you know, a content creator of some sort, it takes a lot of vulnerability to put yourself out there. I think that as a journalist, when you find yourself going in single-minded pursuit of, this, of telling the story or, or presenting this narrative, that you do something that's very admirable, something that you know, we should be proud of. So I'm just going to say that I'm proud of everyone in this industry who's doing the, the work to make sure that our individual countries and our continent as a whole continue to be represented with honesty and with nuance. Wow, that is beautiful and fantastic. All right, so, I mean, as we got to the tail end of this, Arit, you know, this being a platform where, you know, it is at the very heart of it is to, you know, um, uh, connect and to empower, especially the young people, by the way. I know who are quite a huge follower, you know, big fans and followers of, uh, of my platform. What would be, you know, your advice, and, you know, just about life and all that? I would say that it can often be very easy to live other people's dreams. It can be easy to find yourself walking other people's journeys. But I, I feel like it has also even been a consistent theme in this conversation that for me, a big principle is to make sure that I am walking my own path, um, living my own journey. So I will say that it's always worth it to take the time to identify what you want. And that if you don't know, that's okay too. I'll say that don't ever get tired of learning. Don't ever get tired of interrogating the things that you have always taken as fact. And when you come to a knowledge that contradicts or that stands in opposition to something you've always believed, give yourself the space to ask questions. Give yourself the space to learn. Give yourself the space to say, maybe I didn't know as much and now I know more. I feel that we have, we're in a very unique position. We have the opportunity to engage with the world in such a diversity of ways. And so just keep doing, keep doing what you know is success for you. Keep doing what you know is growth for you. Make sure that the life you are living is your own. Wow, I mean, yeah. <laughs> Afternoons can never get better than this, Ari. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for making time again for, you know, for this interview. I mean, I've quite learned a lot as well. Being somebody who, you know, who loves your work. I know I follow CNN Africa religiously. And as I told you, I want to take your job. But <laughs> thank you, Asante Sana. We say Asante. You could, you could try, you could try, Rono. You could try. <laughs> But I, but I do I do love your work and you know keep keep doing the things and you keep doing the good work you know and telling the stories of you know the, the dazzling trendsetters across the African continent. Thank you so much, Rona. Thank you for your work, and thank you for ensuring that all these stories are also told. I I am a huge fan of your doggedness. I'm a huge fan of your persistence, your ambition, and your patience. It's a very rare combination. And uh, I'm excited about all the stories that you will continue to tell as well. Wow, thank you so much. Thank you.